Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the iPhone 14 Pro and see how this device holds up in the later part of 2022. Now, I'm going to tell you not a lot of crazy things have changed, but I've used this phone extensively for the last, you know, two months that this phone's been out, and I can definitely tell you, this is not a bad phone. This is a really, really good phone for sure, and I'm really, really happy with it. I just kind of still think it's overpriced, and I just don't really think it's probably like worth an upgrade from the 13 Pro, and I think this iPhone kind of makes the older ones seem like a better value per dollar. For $1,000, really you're just getting a little bit of a change in design. Obviously, you're getting a faster phone and everything, but I do think from the iPhone 13 Pro, 12 Pro, 11 Pro, even from an iPhone XS, if you own those phones, you could probably just skip this one and just go straight for the iPhone 15 Pro next year. And that's probably what I would recommend doing. Now the body and the design, I think everyone knows this by now, 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display, very good panel, 120 hertz. The build quality is awesome. The frosted glass back is beautiful. And after comparing this iPhone against pretty much all the other iPhones and a lot of other Samsung phones and Google Pixels that came out this year as well, this phone stands up very well. The dynamic island thing is very annoying. I don't know why they did this and it is really, really obnoxious. Noxious, but I do think the build quality is probably better than any other build quality in pretty much any other phone right now. Like it is up there for sure. I will also say the battery life is pretty good as well. I've done several tests and it did outperform my Google Pixel 7, my Galaxy S22, my other iPhones before this one, but it wasn't beating my Pixel 6 and or my Pixel 6a. So keep that in mind if you're probably wanting a you know phone with better battery life, those ones are probably the better ones, at least from what I can test. Now on top of that, Apple has pushed out so many updates with this specific phone, both with press releases and with software updates. So software updates, you already know, they're going to be getting, you know, iOS 16 updates for probably the remainder of this year, as well as midway through next year. And, you know, it's going to be very solid. I don't really think there's too much to complain about there. And I'm glad this thing is getting software support for, you know, many, many years. You will probably not be able to even use this phone by the time this thing is discontinued with software. So this phone is going to be here to stay, which is really awesome. This does bring us to another very interesting point, which is a press release Apple made maybe a few weeks ago, maybe not even two weeks ago. They basically said that the iPhone 14 Pro demand is so high, and with shutdowns that are going on in different countries, basically they can't even keep up with demand since they have to shut down some plants right now. So iPhone 14 Pros are going to be delayed like crazy from what I'm understanding. So if you're trying to get one like by the holiday season or whatever, or New Year's or something, you might want to get one and pre-order it sooner than later. But that doesn't necessarily mean you should go and just immediately pick this device up. Like I said, with an iPhone 13 Pro, that is easily a really solid option that I love, and that is a beautiful iPhone. That one is still the iPhone I'm using. I'm still using my iPhone 13 Pro, even though I own a 14 Pro, mostly because of that SIM card situation, but it's also because of the iPhone 14 Pro. Just It's so similar to the iPhone 13 Pro, so I don't even see the reason to go and upgrade right now. That is personally why I love the 13 Pro, just so future-proofed for such a long period of time, so that is a really awesome thing. So personally, that is a big thing in my opinion. But again, this also does bring us to something like today. Should you go and buy the 14 Pro? Of course. You know, I think this phone is completely worth it. It's a very, very solid phone. But I do think if you have something like the iPhone, you know, 13 Pro or 12 Pro or even the 11 Pro or 10s, I would probably just recommend keeping those devices. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.